there's a very convenient thing that you can do. So just do a PD. So PD is our pandas uh, library. So PD dot two, right? Uh, daytime, and then you can pass this column which is called prior um, sale date, right? If you do this, this will give you the actual um, daytime, right? So and then what I can do is we haven't talked about this before, but we can actually assign um, this new um, thing back to the same field name. So this is how you can assign uh, values into a column, right? You can actually do this with a new column too, right? So what if I want to create df. You know, new column, right? So I can just call this all just one, right? So this is gonna be a dummy column, and then when you actually do that, you can actually then look at df. Head. Notice that there is this new column, right? It's all like one. Um, but then I can drop it later, but this is how you can do the column assignment. Um, so now, because I already have this column, I'm just gonna overwrite it with this date time format. So I can do that. And then I can just do that for, uh, there is another column that's actually should be in a date time format, which last sale date. Okay, so now I have all this, and then I can do df.info again. Oh, so neat. Okay, so info again. Now you can actually see. Okay, so I have last sale date, which is date time, right? It's changed from before. Now the type is for prior sale date is date time again. So that's great. Then now you can do a lot of fancy things. So what if I want to say, um, date dot dt, right? This is an innate function, and then you can actually say date means daytime dot year. If I just do this, it will give me the year for last sale day. If I do months, right, it will do the same thing months uh, or day, right? There's so many things you can do, and then I think there's a weekday as well, weekday, right? Weekday, right? You can do weekday name, uh, as you can see, which will give you Thursday, like the name of the day. Or if you want to just have a numerical value um, assigned as a weekday, I believe zero is Sunday, um, you can actually do it this way too. So what if I want to create a new feature, a new column that's called weekday of um, last sale date. Uh, all right, so you can actually assign this back to our DF and then you know the column name is called uh, weekday last sale Date. And then now we can look at df again, right? You can see head, I use head all the time to check if I, you know, the new columns added or not. So you can see it's added in here, right? So which is like very, very convenient. You can do a bunch of other things like, you know, what if I want to do year, right? And then I can say in year, right? So what if I want to then do this same thing for prior sale date? And then this one is going to be prior sell day, right? So prior sell day, I think it's like last sell day is the last time the transaction happens. And then prior sell day is actually when the, the sales prior to this last sale happened. So that's why you can actually look at this one, say. Uh, okay, so yeah, okay, cool. So then we are going to look at head. Okay, so we have, you know, all these added columns. So now we can actually, like, in a way, create another column that's called, you know, time between or year between two last two sales, right? Because, you know, something like this. So we're going to use this these two columns, year prior sell date and year last sale date to do this, right? So literally, it's just one line of code. So you can do df. Um, last sale date, uh, sale year, um, oh, actually no, it's year, and then last sale year minus, D, uh, minus df dot um, year, and then prior, right? So this will tell you the difference, right? How long did it take for the last um, 
after the prior sales date and how long did it take for the last sale date to happen and in the unit is year so you can actually look at this again and see okay is it added is it calculating it right so okay so i have this three in um year so yeah 2009 2004 so yes the difference is five right so prior sale year sale date year is actually 2004 and then last sale date and the year of that is actually 2009 so the difference is five and then this happens in the same year so it's zero so yeah you can actually you know do a lot of these things by having changing you know a, a string or object to pandas to daytime right so that's why i i convert it to daytimes because i wanted to use all these functions like convert to year weekday and so forth um so great so now let's look at the actual correlation right which is like made very easy it's like df.core that's it so core is a function therefore you have to have the parentheses so df.core will, will tell you all the correlations of the numerical fields like numerical fields can, can like only numerical fields can have correlations right so um, you can actually see what is the correlation of because what I'm interested in is really I mean it's a huge matrix but what I'm interested in is really just the estimated value right so this is what I'm interested in. you can actually see well done is one to one is because you have SN value to itself therefore the correlation is always going to be one but what is the highest one, right? I mean, just eyeballing this, I see 77, right? What is that? I'm going here. It's going to be, yeah, last sale amount, obviously, right? That's what we saw in the pair plot as well. But I mean, what can we do to like make this more like user friendly? Because like, it's kind of hard to like scroll up and down, left, right? So what we can do is just pretty much, this is actually a data frame uh, on its own. We can actually take the type of this, right? Let's say type. Okay, so it's a pandas data frame. So pandas data frame has another like very useful um, um, function that you can use to slice it. So you can actually do location, right? So location or iLock is going to be the index location will, will allow you to do something like this, right? So this, you can actually put the roles that you want, the roles, and then this will be the columns you want. Right, and then you're gonna separate them with this comma. But then the rules here that we want is really the estimated value, right? And then the columns here is pretty much everything. When you put everything, it's like this, it's a column. So it like, yeah, it's, it's more visual. Now I can look at, you know, different values only for estimated value, right? Cause that's what I'm interested in. So, um, to its own, it's always one, but then, okay, I mean, new column, it doesn't really matter because I just add it. Um, so, yeah, so obviously the highest one is um, is the prior cell amount still, right? It's in here, right? So what if I want to sort it, right? Um, sort, I, I guess you can sort um, values and then you can actually say something like this right so when you sort it and these two doesn't I mean they don't really count so you can actually say the highest one is this but I want the highest one to be you know to come on the top so you can actually say ascending right ascending is equal to false Oh, it works. Yeah, it works. So you can actually say, okay, I have all these columns and then the highest one is indeed this one, right? And then um, later, if we, when we get into modeling, I'm going to actually take, say, the top few features or columns because they have the highest correlations. In this case, it's going to be last sale amount, um, square footage, bathrooms, rooms, right? And prior sale amount. Right, so I mean, it kind of is. It is intuitive, right? Like these are pretty much important features, like when it comes to um, value of a house. Um, yeah, so these are the things that you can do in terms of statistics, including visualizations. You know, including um, looking at the different you know um, stats, right? And then definitely the correlation um, function is very very important.